and friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. Uh, I had the grandkids out with my grants, uh, my uh, son-in-law, and uh, we got a mess of little pan fish today. So I thought maybe, maybe you'd be interested in seeing how we fillet them and how we do our fish fry. So I've already gotten started. There's, I don't know, there's about 20 more left in the, the sink. I run them in full of cold water now. This sink draws lake, well, lake water, so the water they're used to. Got a few fillets cut up in the bucket already, but I'll show you how this is done in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna let you look right over my shoulder, and I'm gonna have a little sip of my Jamaican Me Happy here. Just because I'm on vacation. Okay, so you grab yourself one of these here panfish. Now these guys are alive and flopping. Got my very safe, sharp, small fillet knife. Good sized bluegill. Okay. Now this works for sunfish and I do perch a slightly different way and I'll show you a perch if I have any left. So I start in the top of the head. There's the dorsal fin. So about, I don't know, three, half of the way between the end of the dorsal fin and the eyeballs. Start with about like a 45 degree cut down towards that gill flap until you touch the spine. And I can feel the spine. Now I'm going to pull the knife back and just take the tip and slash the skin right down like that. On the other side, I just take the tip of the knife under the skin and do that. So cut down to the spine, slice to the belly. Now I like to start on this side. So I'm holding him down with my fingers. I take the tip of the, the knife. I start it right in here so I'm touching the spine and I'm inside the the, the spine bones and the, the bones that go in from the, the fins. And I'm just tapping the ribs as I go down. Now I can feel there's no more ribs. So I shove the knife all the way through, out the back, right out the bottom like that. Well, I'm pressing flat down on the knife this way to keep it tight to the spine. And you can feel it walk right along the, the spine bones. And there, I've done the, the initial cut. Grab that flat, pull it back with your thumb. Cut down there deep to make sure you've got it all the way cut loose around the ribs. And now I'm just putting slight upward force, kind of a twisting motion like this away from the ribs and I'm literally just touching that with the knife and there's the whole side with the skin on it there. And I'll show you how to finish that off in a second. So I'm going to do this one again quickly in like that through past the, the ribs all the way out the back. Pull that up Make sure you cut it loose all the way to the, the ribs. Slight, slight pressure upward and rolling away. Sometimes I put my finger right in that hole that's created so I can kind of push my index finger away and keep this taut. <laughs> and there you go, both are off. Now, I always puncture the airbag because we're going to drop these back in the lake to dispose of them. We don't want them floating up on the shore. All right. So I got my fillets with the skin still on them. All you do with that is... Oop, drop my knife. I hold the end of the skinny part back where the tail was down with my thumbnail, start the knife in, and again I'm pushing down flat with the knife as I skid it along the skin. And you just have to practice this. And it just slips between the skin and the meat, and there you have a completely boneless fish fillet. I did get one little rib bone, so I'm going to get him out of there. There. Just a piece of skin. I'll do that again. 
slight downward pressure flat on the knife. Bonus fillet. Okay. I'm going to show you my recipe here. I got to show you this pig. That's a sunfish. That's a pumpkin seed sunfish. Gosh, she's a chunk. He or she. Same thing with a sunfish. Now, if you squeeze right here behind their eyes, you'll kind of feel how their um, gills cave in, so it almost gives you like thumb holes, like in a bowling ball. It's tough. There we go. Make the two cuts. Oops. Watch out. You, you got to be careful with your knife. Control your knife at, at all times. Or you could uh, slash yourself pretty good. Come on. I've done so many of these, it's like second nature. Yeah, he's cut. Gosh, he's bleeding like crazy. I didn't want it to be a bloody mess. All right. Oh, stop. Fish have uh, no pain sensories, so I'm following that spine down, touching the ribs. I get right here. Oh, no more ribs. Knife's all the way through, all the way off the tail. Peel this back. Now, this isn't the only way to fillet a fish. This is the way I have uh, taken different types of filleting techniques that I've seen over the years and combined them into what I like to do and just fillet them right off in the ribs. Excuse me. Beautiful fillet. So I've got about 40 of these little buggers to do. So I'm going to be here a while. But I can move pretty fast. Peeling it back, peeling it back. My finger in that hole I showed you. Slip the knife carefully beside your finger. Continue. Pull it down. Cut it free. All right. Now there's pretty much no muscular left uh, musculature left on that fish. Of course, obviously, I'll be washing these fillets in the, the sink after I'm done with this. This is just the preliminary cutting. Not, they're, they're not ready, per se, for cooking until we give them a good thorough inspection and cleaning for any parasites or any such stuff. All right. That's fillet and panfish. Now perch, I already, we only had one perch, and I already did him, so I'm sorry. But what I do with Okay, that, I did find... I did find a perch. Um, we put the fish that are dying or dead in the water in the fridge so they don't break down. The living ones we leave on a fish basket on the dock. So, perch. Very small perch, but he was injured because he had the hook in the gills. So we keep what might die. So, again, cut down through to the backbone, down each side. Now, I cut right down the the dorsal fin. Just like that. But I'm cutting straight. I'm going to do it this way maybe. Right along that fin. Anyway. All right. I've cut on both sides of the dorsal fin. See, now I can grab the skin. Helps you have a thumbnail. There you go. And I peel him open, just peeling his skin off. I, I missed on that side. Oops, his fin come right out. Good. Slipping my thumb underneath the skin as I go. So all I'm leaving is the skin on this side. And do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, black lake doesn't have big perch in it. 
these little six to eight inches is about most of 99% of what you get. Okay, so now I've got the skin peeled all the way back off both sides to the tail. Cut through the backbone. And then just pull. And there you go. The guts, the head, the hide, all gone. Now you can just grab these fins and pull them out. We got part of them out. They just pull out. And I guess I'll cut the tail off. Sometimes I'll leave the tail on. Put my thumb on, under the knife, but there you go, a little tiny perch. I gotta rupture his bladder. That's why I'm stabbing all these fishes to break the rear bladder. All right, well, that's the perch. We're gonna get to the cooking part pretty soon. All right, we're getting ready to have the fish fry, so I've got the fillets that I put in this bucket and rinsed several times before. That's the one I always use when I'm filleting. Okay, I'm just going to go through these and rinse them individually. I guess what I'll do is put the fillets in this thing and, and make sure I don't get any scales. So I'm going to do it on this side. Sorry. Well, I was just dumping the scales right into the colander, wasn't it? And I'm just inspecting, washing off any scales of blood. And that's one, two, five. I counted 62, there would only been 60 sunnies and bluegills but the two perch. I only counted them as one. Alright, now we're just going to shake these around, shake the water out of them. We don't want them bone dry, but we don't want the grease to spatter too much either because we're going to lay these out on paper towels and salt and pepper them before we put them in. All right. All right, guys, here we are. We have the fillets all uh, washed and starting to dry a little bit. We've got a platter to uh, salt them in. We've got a 12-inch cast iron frying pan with vegetable oil. going to be really hot on that turkey roaster. You need it good and, good and uh, hot. And then a platter to place the cooked fish onto. So... I'm going to get this uh, camera set up and we'll get this oil heating and uh, we'll cook a fish. Alright, let's light the griddle. Turn on my fuel. I hear it hissing. Oh yeah, we got fire. Let's see. Need a little more than that. Now it's going to take a few minutes for the oil to get hot enough. But we're going to start over here. By laying a few fish out. salt and pepper. We're doing them plain this time. Normally I will bread them with a, a drench of milk and egg. Then I just dredge them in dry Aunt Jemima's uh, pancake batter mix. So they have just a very, very light dusting. All right. 
Now when that gets hot enough. All right, guys, I'll toss the fish in there. See how it goes. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll give these a test in a minute when they cool down a little bit. Meanwhile, Eat the ugly one. Now there's a bit right there. Mm. Oh, no, that's the ticket. Try it, try it. Go above it. Mm. Oh, it's crispy. Crunchy. A little bit salt. This pump. All right, well that's how it goes. That's what these little guys look like when they're done. They curl up. We'll put you on hold till we uh, finish the meal here cooking. All right. Pretty much ish. It for the fish fry. Put them over on the belly. Around the back. Grandpa. What the final thing should be you taking a bite of one and going like. Mm. And what? The final thing should be you picking one up and biting and going. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's what my director wanted me to do. Turn that knob all the way off. So, silver knob. Righty tighty. All right, we're done. And there we go. A nice platter of golden fried fish. Now hopefully, Grandma is in the house making finely chopped onion with sweet pickle relish and Miracle Whip tartar sauce, which makes it all that much better. All right, guys. We'll see you next time at Bob's Barn Workshop. This is Bob, and this is my granddaughter. Say your name, kid. Sadie. <laughs> She's the one that loves the fish. <laughs>